10 units of regular insulin IV along with 50 milliliters of dextrose 50% for a client diagnosed with acute renal failure. The nurse understands that the medication is intended to correct which electrolyte imbalance that the client is most likely experiencing. A. Hyperkalemia B. Hyperglycemia C. Hypernatremia or D. Hypercalcemia. This question is forcing you to recognize medical terms concerning electrolyte abnormalities. There are certain tricks when approaching electrolytes. For example, if you see hyper in front of an electrolyte, this means it is high. And if you see hypo in front of a word, it means that it is low. For example, if your patient has a potassium level of 3.3, they are said to be hypokalemic. And if they have a potassium level of 5.5, they are said to be hyperkalemic because normal is between 3.5 to 5.5. These levels are important to maintain proper homeostasis. Since the question is not giving us the exact values, it is asking us to recognize why these medications are normally given. In kidney failure, potassium levels in the blood may be increased because of the loss of ability by the kidneys to excrete the extra potassium out of the body. Regular insulin given intravenously with 50 milliliters of dextrose 50% also given intravenously helps shift the potassium from the extracellular fluid into the cell, which normalizes the serum potassium levels in your client with hyperkalemia. If you look at the other answer options, option B, hyperglycemia, this means high blood sugar. In cases of high blood sugar, you do not want to give more sugar. In essence, you do not want to give dextrose 50%. This would cause the blood sugar to get even higher. So this answer option would not be correct. Also, option C, hypernatremia, means elevated serum levels, which would not be treated with this type of medication therapy. And finally, hypercalcemia means elevated calcium levels, which this medication therapy is also not a treatment for making the final and correct answer option A. Also, just a little personal experience that I went through. One time I received a patient from the emergency department. The patient was a renal failure patient and he did have a high potassium level. His potassium was 6.2. When I received the patient though, the admitting orders said to administer k exalate But when I was reviewing the chart, there were two things that I noticed. One thing was that the lab in their electrolyte panel, they had said, that the specimen was slightly hemolyzed. If the specimen's hemolyzed, then it can show an elevated potassium level because hemolyzed just means that it was sitting there too long and it's not a very fresh specimen. So when the cells are just sitting there, think about it, the potassium can just leak into the fluid and it can show a higher potassium. The other thing that I noticed was that this patient in the ER was given the insulin and dextrose. So instead of administering the KXLate, I called the doctor and I asked if we could recheck the potassium before I gave the KXLate. And I'm really glad that I did because the potassium level came back on the low side of normal. So had I given that KXLate, it would have probably gone very low. So just a little word to the wise so that hopefully, you know,